Well, hello, everyone. I would like to give to you a very, very brief devotion today, as I've been trying to do most every day except for the weekends. And I considered not doing it today because it's Wednesday and we'll have services tonight. But uh, let me start out. I'm going to read a passage of scripture to you. This is 2 Timothy in chapter number 1. Starting in verse 1, the Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. And I'm going to stop right there. So what I've been doing with these, um, with these uh, various devotions, these short devotions, is just trying to remind you some things uh, to pray, uh, uh, some, some tools, some reminders in prayer. And I've been using the apostles' prayers, especially the Apostle Paul. He's the one who's written most of our New Testament, at least uh, half of the, um, of the New Testament and most of the epistles for sure. And so we have a lot more of his prayers, the things that he prayed for, um, for, for believers, for others. And so one of the things he says in the book of Romans, I've just kind of given each book a theme, a prayer theme. The book of Romans is prayer for salvation. And he uh, said, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I've said this over and over. Israel isn't a person. Israel is a nation. And um, certainly we, should, we need to be praying for our country right now. We need to be praying for our nation. We need to be praying for our leaders. We need to be praying for, um, you know, President uh, Trump. We need to be praying for a vice president. We need to be praying uh, for all of those that are uh, in decision-making um, uh, offices, whether they're uh, men and women that we agree with or uh, some that we disagree with. We still want to uh, to pray for them right now, and uh, we ought to be doing that on a regular basis. And especially, we want to be praying for God to heal our land. And I don't know that. In my mind, I'm not positive that that means praying for God to heal our land of the virus. I think it's more that God would heal our land of our spiritual uh, blindness and the, the ungodliness that, uh, that pervades the United States of America today. Then in uh, in uh, First and Second Corinthians, I said that the theme of prayer is separation; that the saints would keep themselves from evil, and that there'd be no uh, divisions uh, among them. And so, when we separate from those that cause division, what happens is there is unity in the church. He prayed in uh, the theme of prayer in Ephesians is the spirit of wisdom that God would give his, that God's people would have light shined into the recesses of their minds so that they would understand the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the exceeding greatness of his power. In Philippians, the theme of prayer is genuine sincerity among the saints that our love would abound more and more, that we would approve things that are excellent, and that we would be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. In the book of Colossians, the theme of prayer is that Christians would be strengthened with all might, being filled with the knowledge of his will and walking worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. And then uh, in First and Second Thessalonians, the theme of prayer is that the believers would be sanctified, holy, spirit, soul, and body, dedicated to the Lord. And then we come uh, to the passage here in uh, First and Second Timothy, I read Second Timothy chapter one, a little bit of it, and the theme of prayer there is to see the brethren in fellowship at church. Boy, doesn't that seem like an appropriate kind of thing uh, today? He said, number one, uh, he says this. He said that uh, when I call to remembrance, he's remembering that he, you know, these are he's remembering his fellowship. He's remembering those that he loves. He's remembering those that he has a relationship with. When I call to remembrance, and what a blessing it is, but he says that he's greatly desiring to see them. Uh, it's not just, boy, I have fond memories, and boy, wasn't that a wonderful time back then? He said, no, I want to see you again. You know, it, we as a local church, we can uh, 
you know, we can look back right now and we're all kind of, uh, you know, sheltered at home and all of those sorts of things. And we can remember our fellowship. We can remember the things in the past. We can remember the things that we've done as a local church. We can remember the times that we had and all that. And that's all wonderful. But the thing that uh, that um, that we as believers ought to be doing is saying, Lord, I, I'm looking forward to the day when we can be back together when we can be assembled together. A church isn't a church unless it's assembled. Don't, don't let all these people who are saying, well, the church isn't the building, and so finally the church is let loose right now, and you're the church. That's not at all true. You are a member of the church. You are a part of a church, if you're a member of a church. You're a part of a church, but you are not the church. You are not the temple. The house of God is an assembly of believers. We are members one of another, and the church is, is active when we are assembled together. Right now, that's not a possibility. I understand that. It's not a possibility for us uh, right now, and I think that the reasons seem um, legitimate, at least, uh, uh, at, at, at least legitimate enough that, we, um, that we'll participate in. We're, gonna be, we're not going to try to do civil disobedience sort of thing, but we ought to be in fervent prayer for the healing of our land so that we can be assembled together uh, in local churches. I, I don't know what's going to happen. This this um, virus thing, if it goes on long, it, it, it could affect economy, but I think it really could impact churches. Uh, but to be honest with you, I think it'll impact them in good ways. We've got all of these churches right now that, uh, you know, have monster, monster debts because they have monster, monster programs to make them look like they're really, really something and that's never been what a church was supposed to be. A church is supposed to be a simple um, body come together to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And so um, I'm really looking, uh, I'm really praying for revival to happen, to re- for revival to happen in, in the, the churches of the living God through all of this. And uh, so anyway, uh, that's my devotion for today. The Lord bless you. Uh, we're looking forward to, Pastor Caleb and I are looking forward to the service tonight. Uh, Pastor Caleb will be uh, will start uh, the live stream here on Facebook on our private prayer page. Um, we'll start that live stream at uh, five minutes till uh, till seven and uh, get things going tonight. And just uh, Pastor Caleb, myself, and Brother Randy, uh, kind of running the technical the technology for us. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tonight. Until then, be in prayer. Ask God um, to uh, to. Uh, Heal our land and bring us to a place where we can be united, fellowshipping, seeing the brethren once again. God bless.